Imagine a boy being born in Rome in 121 AD. At three years old, the boy's father dies and he is raised by his mother. At 17 years old, the boy is adopted by the emperor of Rome. The emperor became fond of the boy and a few years later, he marries the emperor's daughter. The boy matures into a great man and eventually assumes the title of Caesar. Afterward, he soon becomes the emperor of Rome and thus one of the most wealthy and powerful individuals in the world. How do you think this story ends? Does having wealth, power, and fame make someone better or worse? History is filled with rulers who were corrupted by money and power. However, this boy was different. He would rule the Roman Empire at his height. This boy knew how to find happiness, how to live the good life, and how to make the right decision. So who was this boy? This boy was Marcus Aurelius. Towards the end of his life, Marcus wrote down notes to remind him of his principles and values. These notes have been translated and has become the Emperor's Handbook. Here are seven lessons from the Emperor's Handbook. First lesson is to purge your mind of idle thoughts. A lot of us spend our time thinking about what others are doing or what they think of us. But the truth is, we don't know what our co-workers think of us or what they are doing. How much time do we waste replaying arguments we may have had with a friend or with a spouse? These imaginary conversations really the best use of our time? Marcus doesn't think so. He says to get rid of all these idle thoughts. Instead of worrying what others think or say about us, we should focus on improving our lives. Lesson 2. Avoid the inferior loves of life. We all know people that spend their time chasing popularity or wealth or power or even pleasure. However, Marcus advises us against chasing these inferior loves. He believes that the only good thing people should pursue is goodness and kindness. Being famous can lead to a mental breakdown, having power can lead to bad decisions, and having wealth can lead to greed. Lesson number three, your mind is your vacation home. Marcus says that everyone dreams of the perfect vacation. Could be in the country, or by the sea, or even in the mountains. However, Marcus says, nowhere is there a more idyllic spot, a vacation home more private and peaceful than in one's own mind. Some people believe they have to travel to exotic locations or travel across the country to find the perfect vacation, but Marcus disagrees with this. Marcus says that the perfect vacation spot is in our minds and we could reach it any time. Sometimes, meditating during a lunch break could be more peaceful and relaxing than being on a crowded beach in Cancun. Many people have come to the same conclusion. More and more corporate offices have meditation and yoga rooms for their employees. Marcus says very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Lesson 4. Remove what is unnecessary. We all have 24 hours in a day, and most of us start our day at 9 p.m. We could be answering emails at our desk, or having a meeting with co-workers, or perhaps we're having a conversation with our colleagues. Or maybe we're on the phone with friends or family members. A lot of us spend our days being busy, but when the day is almost over, we feel as if we didn't accomplish much and wish for more time. Marcus suggests that we ask ourselves on each occasion, do I really need to say or do this? By doing this, you will subtract unnecessary tasks and conversations from your day. And you will gain time, happiness, and satisfaction. And five. Be like the third fellow. Marcus says there's three types of people in this world. The first, if you do something for them, they'll expect something back. The second, the second would never be so bold, but in his mind, he knows what he has done and considers the other person to be in debt. However, the third person does good while thinking twice and asks for nothing in return. This is because doing good is in his nature. Just like it is a horse's nature to gallop, or bees to make honey, it should be man's nature to help others. Everyone should try their best to be good. Lesson number six, overlook the wrong of others. Have you ever been in a situation where you're minding your own business, walking down the street, and someone else bumps into you and they get mad at you? Maybe they start cursing at you or threatening you. Ask yourself, what made them do it? Let's look at another scenario. Imagine you were in a crowded subway 
and someone shoves you to get into the train. Perhaps you're late for an important business meeting with the CEO. Would you have acted the same way if you were in their position? If yes, then you should forgive them. Let's look at another example. Imagine it is late at night and you are walking home when all of a sudden a man comes up to you with a knife and demands money. From your perspective, you see this as an act of evil. However, the thief might have a different perspective. Perhaps the thief is homeless and hasn't eaten all day. He has no intention of actually hurting anyone, he just needs money to buy food. It doesn't justify the act of stealing. However, it is important to realize that the thief is in a moral muddle and doesn't have the same ideas of good and evil. Lesson 7. Accept corrections and adjust. Life is complex and filled with information. Sometimes we make decisions and are afraid to change our position even when new information suggests a better solution. No one is perfect and we all make mistakes, so it's important to ask ourselves, am I wrong? Oftentimes it is our ego that fears being wrong and may try to convince us that we're always right. Marcus suggests that it is better to change your mind and accept the corrections of someone who points out your errors. You don't lose any freedom by changing your mind. After all, it is your judgment that makes the change possible. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.